Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Pixelated Sausage Show. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> uh how you doing everyone hope everyone has had a good weekend uh, i was gonna say something uh, when i said uh, or when i say i was gonna say something i was trying to think Ooh, can i wish everyone a happy easter even people who don't celebrate easter no because easter that was last weekend so that's not gonna work but i'm of course your host marco Genez. I'll be talking about Nine Years of Shadow, Hyper 5, and Fashion Police Squad on today's show. But before I get to all that, I have dabbled with returning to streaming over the past week or so. I can't remember the the first night I streamed a little bit on Twitch, and then I streamed a little bit more on Twitch, and then I returned to YouTube to give that a go as well, and after streaming on both platforms again, I am going to make YouTube my permanent new home, and the reason for this is because it's been a while since I last streamed on YouTube, and some changes have been made. I don't believe they've made any strides in discoverability when you're streaming i could be wrong maybe the platform the 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 site or the app or whatever does a better job of separating or presenting live streams as they're happening because a random did show up right away in my YouTube stream, which did not happen during either of my Twitch streams. But what convinced me to transition to make YouTube my home for streaming is the fact that, and with this, they also, I don't know if these all happen around the same time, but another thing that did happen was they introduced podcasting to YouTube as an official thing, as its own category, 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 categorized, category, categorized, 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 its own categorized thing where you can set up a show or a playlist. I, I don't know how it works exactly if if you do it yourself because they just did it for me i got a notification that said we we introduced podcasting to youtube and if you have a podcast on youtube you can set it up to be that way and it'll also be available on youtube music as a podcast in audio form so that sounds pretty cool right and we see that you have this pixelated sausage show we're pretty sure this is a podcast i don't know if i wrote it they just i guess figured it out on their own and set everything up themselves so that was kind of nice of them to do good algorithm good smart ai there because there definitely wasn't a human individual who stumbled upon my site and said yeah this site is worth spending any amount of time on but they have introduced the the podcasting as its own thing, which is cool. And I like it. I have no idea if, for instance, listens on YouTube music translate to views on YouTube. I would assume not. That would be a little bit weird, but it would also be cool. I would like that. But that should do a bit of help in terms of discoverability, uh, the, the YouTube music thing specifically. But in addition to that, what I notice with the streaming changes is that now live streams as they're happening, upcoming streams, and your archive, if you choose to keep everything there and not delete anything or unlist anything or anything like that, 
it now has its own separate space as well on your channel. So on your channel, you have your home page, you have your video screen that shows all your videos, not categorized, uh, not in the playlist or anything like that. And, and then you have a live tab. Now, past streams, whether you choose to, uh, to make them public or keep them public after the fact or not, will reside there instead of cluttering up your main videos feed, which was always the dilemma with YouTube because you had to choose between, if you cared about this at all, after a stream was over, do you make it private and just make it so that to enjoy a live stream, you have to be there live, which would suck. That would be the worst way to do it. Or you could leave the live stream unlisted and put it into a playlist so that people could watch it or access past live streams via a playlist while not having them clutter up your videos feed. Or you could make them public, but then the cluttering will happen. And what you choose is up to you. The main reason why you'd want to make a, a live stream public, a past live stream and archive public is so that people can discover it when searching for a game or whatnot on YouTube. If you don't make it public and, and instead keep it unlisted, but in a playlist, yes, you can access it that way. People can access it. It's, it's there readily available, but it's not discoverable. It won't show up in search and then the ability to potentially gain new viewers, increase your audience from past live streams is completely gone. It's dead on arrival because now only people who already know of your channel, who already visit it, are even going to be aware that such content exists. That makes past live streams you know, you, you want to appease your audience that you currently have. You want to give them access to it, but it, it does kind of make the past streams a little bit worthless since they, they can't do anything to increase your, your reach. But now that they have their own little tab, that isn't the case anymore, which is pretty cool. And that was what sold me on making YouTube the place to be. Because that was one of the biggest issues I had with YouTube in the past, is just not wanting to clutter up that space. When I was streaming significantly on YouTube in the past, before I took an extended break, and I don't know how long or, or, or how often I'll be streaming now or anything of that nature, it's still very up in the air what is going on and all that jazz. But when I was streaming on YouTube in the past, it did clutter the hell out of the video's feed. So I'm so happy that they've given it its own space. Very nice. Good on you, YouTube. I haven't been paying attention to, uh, to some of the changes you've been making, apparently, but you've been, you've been doing some good stuff. So touche. Now, all you have to do is give fucking shorts their own thing. That's what they're called, right? YouTube shorts. They're TikTok equivalent. Give those their own fucking space. Because having those clutter up the video feed is annoying. That's maybe worse than past live streams. Eh. Well, they're, they're worse than past live streams because you can have a lot more YouTube shorts in a short period of time because they're shorts than past live streams. I hate it as a viewer, as a subscriber to other channels. It has made me unsubscribe from various channels because I do not give a shit about shorts. I don't care about that type of content. I don't want to consume it. And when a channel is putting out multiple shorts a day, I'm done. I'm gone. I don't, I don't want that shit in my subscription feed 
and I can't turn it off. I can't toggle it myself. Let channels do it, but really just give me the option. If you're not gonna separate it itself on a channel, allow me to set up how I want my subscription to be handled. Let me say, I don't want shorts in my feed because all I own are pants and that's all I wanna wear and that's all I wanna see. Get the fucking shorts out away from me, all right? I'm not kidding, I don't own any shorts. I kind of feel like I, I need to get at least a few pair though because it's gotten a little hot here in Chicago, especially for me who does not deal with any type of heat well. 77 or so is too hot. It's already too hot. It's thankfully going to go back down around 60, upper 50s in a day or two. So I'm looking forward to that. But man, this has not been fun. I have not enjoyed this. But what I have enjoyed is Fashion Police Squad. Let's start off with that game. I, I've enjoyed it overall, but it's got some issues. So Fashion Police Squad is a level-based first-person shooter with a pixel aesthetic and a fashion theme where instead of killing your enemies, you are killing their fashion faux pas. You are bedazzling them, making them all pretty. You are helping them get out of their funky fashion nonsense. Are they wearing socks with sandals? Are they wearing a suit that is too big or too tight that isn't tailored to them? Are they having baggy pants and showing their fucking buttholes? They're not showing their buttholes, but they're showing their underwear. Or they're riding around on scooters. I don't remember what the fashion faux pas of the scooter people were uh, was, but uh, you didn't like them either. And then you have the Karens who were wearing ill-fitted dresses that were really just potato sacks. You, you do this. That's what you're doing as a cop, as Sergeant Des. You go around with a whole bunch of fucking fashion puns that got irritating really fast. The, the writing was grating faster than I expected. As someone who likes puns, I was sick of these fashion puns pretty early on. But to do this, to alleviate the world of these fashion nightmares you have an arsenal of fashion themed weapons at your disposal including a paintball shotgun which brings color to the dolls the men in gray suits who are gray up and down from their tippy toes to their hairy wearies uh, you blast them in the face a few times with your shotgun, and then they're full of color, and they're all happy, and whatnot. Or you have your threaded needle machine gun, which you use to tailor those ill-fitted dresses and suits. And a gnome grenade that you throw at the fucking tourists in their socks with sandals, who will startle you not startle you they'll stun you with their flashes from their cameras because they're they're fucking taking pictures in their socks and their sandals so you throw a few gnome grenades at them and they'll chop they'll go nom 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 at their fucking socks and fix them <laughs> but and oh yeah you have, you have the vapors I think the vapors the vapors are the 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 low pants underwear shown folk oh, fools i think you specifically call them fools and then you beat them with your belt you fucking whip your belt at them and you smack them until no more vaping from them because their vaping will damage you and also the karens the karens will fucking they they fly around by I don't remember what they called it, but they're basically just shitting out their butthole with a lot of fucking gas. And it's disgusting. And it's just, it's gross. But the game, one, I really like the look of it. I like the pixel aesthetic. It's 
it has a bit of a because it is a 3d uh, first person shooter but the characters in game are 2d in nature so it has a very distinct aesthetic that is reminiscent of i mean you could say stuff like octopath or whatever just in the way that the the, the pixel sprites are but of a VR game I played that was something 1984 or whatever that was, uh, was eliciting classic gaming vibes. And it looks really cool. I like it. it. It's got a good look to it. And the shooting feels surprisingly good. There is aim assist. I'm pretty sure I saw an option for that in the, the options that's on by default. But it isn't overly aggressive so you don't feel like the game is aiming for you it's more so that it, it's it doesn't even feel like if you're shooting a little bit off that the game will move the the bullets move the bullets will nudge the bullets there if, you, if it, 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 it's not a case of are you shooting in the general direction okay that's good enough the controls are just tight and responsive and smooth and the game just feels good as a shooter it feels surprisingly good and then the whip in addition to whipping them vaping fools with it your belt it's not a whip but you whip it whip it real good you can also use it to traverse via, via uh, whipping along light poles i guess they were not, not light poles those flagpoles that you would see on skyscrapers and the like, you whip across those, and that feels good when you get a good string going, but it also, it can, it can be frustrating at times because the momentum can vary significantly. But the way gaming play works, which ends up posing a problem the more and more you play, is that all these enemies require a different type of weapon uh, and you have to switch between them during fights and, and the more enemies that are introduced the more that will attack you in one scenario in one encounter and you're switching between all these weapons and it becomes more frustrating than anything else to have to toggle between the weapons because th there's no great way there's a weapon wheel that you can bring up or you can scroll between them with one of the bumpers but that becomes tedious because uh, you you have your your karens and your your suit guys who require the thread and needle machine gun you have your vapors who require the whip you have your socks and sandal tourists who require the gnome grenades your dulls who require the shotgun the paintball shotgun and then the scooter boys who require the alternate fire of the shotgun the, the paintball shotgun which sucks out color from both them and vibrant parts in, in the environment which if you get enough color if you suck out enough color it'll give that that gun uh, a super powered double blast for seven or so shells but the scooter boys are really annoying because their attack pattern is just fucking scooting right up into your face. They just want to run into you. And they sometimes show up in really tiny places like an apartment building and in a, a room in an apartment building. And they just... They're a pain to deal with. I don't like them. I think the game would be significantly better if just they were removed it would still be tedious dealing with a bunch of enemies that uh, as you progress because there's also a the the, the tight suited guy they require you to use the grenade you are introduced to from your thread and needle machine gun which will stick them in place because they kind of teleport around they they night crawler around uh which is cool which is cool but a little bit it's, it's, i don't know it, they're, they're fun to deal with you'll you'll I, I think all those 
enemies are the the end all be all and they they just expand upon them as you play more because for instance the dulls as you're progressing more and more through the game they'll introduce a big dull who's super powered and super strong which is really just after you defeat that initial form is just two dolls on top of each shoulders in a very traditional sort of kid kind of uh, one on top of the shoulders with a giant trench coat and said they're wearing a giant dull suit. And it, it just becomes more and more annoying the more enemies you have to deal with. Boss fights are whatever and, and the story is not super great. One of the biggest downfalls or one of the biggest knocks I have against the game is with the music. It's okay, but it's very repetitive. And in a game that is fashion themed, I feel like, I feel like at least, the music should be fucking popping off, as the kids say. It should be really, really good. The music should be one of the highlights, but it's one of the weakest parts of the game. And then one of the strongest parts is every time you finish a level, they, they when they they bring up your stat screen, all the enemies you've defeated during that level, they do a little runway dance. So there's a runway scene, and it's, that's a fun little bit. But the game itself, it, it it's okay. The levels take, I'd say, between 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and, and maybe it could be a little bit longer depending on how thorough you are in exploring them because they'll, they'll all have their own secrets to find and the way it, it works is, is very traditional classic fps-esque with health packs to discover which come in the form of margaritas or some kind of drink and then armor pickups which are bow ties there'll be boxes that'll have additional health and armor that you whip open but it's 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 an all right it's an all right shooter that will will your your mileage will vary based on how tedious you find oh, let me cover the camera uh how tedious you find encounters as you are introduced to more enemies and as as they populate the encounters and you're dealing with a whole bunch you also uh, you're building up a like super powered meter which when you activate then you put on your <laughs> shut up alarm uh as you <laughs> uh you you put on your white glove and then you just are able to go around one shotting all the enemies within a time limit but your mileage will vary depending on how how, how how tedious you find encounters and then how well the the fashion theme and the story the humor works for you it, it can be pretty talky especially early on but it, it it shuts up a little bit and you can just skip all that stuff which is what i did the the saving grace really is the fact that as a shooter mechanically the the shooting itself and the traversal it all feels pretty good. So that that is what kept me playing when I grew tired of the fashion puns and got a little annoyed by the enemies at times. I Honestly, they just need get rid of those fucking scooter guys. They suck ass to fight against. And every time they showed up, it made encounters extra annoying because unlike every other enemy who is, they're not standstill or anything, but they're they're moving at a regular pace. They're just walking around, firing at you in their various ways, and that's fine. And then you have these scooter dudes who require this specific gun and this specific fire and just charge at you. And when you're trying to deal with everyone else, they're fucking ramming into you and bumping you around and it sucks. Get them out of there. I don't like them. Nobody likes them. Let them scoop fucking somewhere else. Put them in that Crayola game. There are plenty of scooters in that. 
but that's Fashion Police Squad. Decent game. If I had to score it, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to to officially start scoring things. I don't believe, but I I'd probably give it a, a a six out of ten. It's it's all right, but it's nothing particularly special. But it's it's better than a five or so. You know, it's 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 decent. It's decent. But uh, Hyper Five is not decent. Let's just get that one out of the way. Hyper Five is a horizontal. <laughs> Why do I, why do I, why do I stumble and, and just pause on a whore? It's not. I don't even want to go into any type of jokey thing regarding whore. It's a horizontal scrolling shmup that is incredibly boring with some one visually the meh. Levels are weird. The way that the game is designed is weird. With the way things and you interact with the environment is weird. The second level, it only has five levels, and some of them are fucking, maybe all of them, because I did not stick with it to even get through all the levels, can be really, really short, and not a lot happens, and then you get to the boss, and then you're like, okay, whatever, and then you defeat the boss, and you're like, that was a whole level? Okie dokie. But in the second level... There's water, and you can just go under the water. And then you can't see shit. You can't see your ship. You, I'm, you can barely, barely see it. It's very, very murky. Hard to see through water. And you're just like, why is this an option? Why can't I go under it? This is weird. Don't like it. And then you have enemies that are in the background. Because it's, you know, it's 2D. Side scrolling shmup. But there, there is background and foreground so they're, they're you can you can clearly tell that these turrets are in the background they're not they're not on your plane they shouldn't be yet if you fly and fly right onto them you're taking damage which just the the way in, in which you interact with your surroundings doesn't make a lick of sense and then the shooting feels like fucking dog shit it feels horrible. There is a because there's a whole upgrade system and a UI that is one of the worst UIs I have interacted with in a very long time. One, and I hate this, the menus are all green, and then your your interact button or whatever you want to call it, uh, your highlight, the the button that you are going to the pressing is highlighted in a uh, gray. That's weird. I don't like that. Make the menus gray and then your interact button green or anything, anything other than what you decide to go with. But then the menus are just super fucking cluttered and there's no great explanation. They just throw you into the fucking game, give you two difficulty options. I went with uh, the more challenging one, which wasn't, super challenging but the second weapon you unlock that you can make uh, the second main weapon you unlock which you can then set as your default is a multi-directional gun that thing fucking sucks I wasted upgrade points on that assuming this would be good because you have times where enemies are flying above you and you can't attack them with your default gun which is just a, a straightforward shooting machine gun it'd be nice to be able to shoot in multiple directions right but the way that gun works is you shoot alternating patterns so you shoot in a cross pattern and then you shoot in an x pattern so you shoot in your cardinal directions northwest southeast and then you shoot diagonally and you're alternating between these two very slowly, it's not a super rapid firing gun, and you're not doing a significant amount of damage, and it's a horrible, horrible gun to ever use. Do not, if you pick up this game, do not, do not pick that gun because it fucking sucks. But it's just, a, uh, it's a mess of a game. It's not fun, super boring, 
and yeah the best thing about it is that I still remember the difference between horizontal and vertical scroll and shmup because vertical jump jump up ah, ha, ha. so that's hyper 5 don't play it not good probably it's probably it'll probably give you easy achievements though so there's that then the last game I played is it's nine years of shadow right I just want to make sure I get the name right yeah nine years of shadow so, Fashion Police Squad and Nine, uh, Fashion Police Squad and Hyper Five are both on Xbox. That's where I played them. They're on other platforms as well. Nine Years of Shadow, I believe, currently is only on PC, which is where I played it on Steam. I don't see how this game doesn't come to consoles at some point because it is very controller. It, it's it's very console minded. It recommends. It highly recommends playing it with a controller, and then. In these settings, there are no visual options. You have resolution and full screen or windowed. That's it. You don't even have presets of low, medium, and high quality or anything of that nature. It is just resolution and windowed mode or not. So it's already, it already feels, it feels like a console game that's just only on PC for now, for whatever reason. But this is a Metroidvania where you play as a young lady who is trying to bring back color to her world because color has been removed via some evil being and your, your parents were killed and you spent nine years training to make this happen. You go to this castle to do it, and you're defeated initially in the opening bit. That's all black and white. And then a magic floating teddy bear comes and resurrects you and breathes color back into the world. And then you go about with your teddy bear buddy, defeating enemies and, you know, going through this castle discovering its layout, getting new abilities that allow you to access new parts of the castle. It's very, very Symphony of the Night specifically. And it's fucking beautiful. It is such a beautiful game. That is what drew me to it initially when I got emails about it. I was always very... Not enamored. I... I, I I was very taken by the visuals. It is super, super colorful. It is a little disappointing that the whole color thing of bringing color, breathing color back into the world isn't isn't actually a part of the gameplay. While, while the initial opening bit where you can't die until you're supposed to uh, for story purposes is all in black and white and the game looks great with with that limitation now once all that happens and plays out and the teddy bear comes up and breathes life back into you as well as color back into the world you're not going around this castle and, and getting to areas that are in black and white there are a few areas that i believe are maybe without color but you don't breathe life back you don't breathe color back into them so that, that doesn't end up becoming a gameplay element. It may be a mild story element, but that that's a little bit disappointing. But the game, disregarding that, is fucking beautiful. It is super colorful. The colors are fantastic. The visual aesthetic, like, it's just a very, very good looking game. But the game itself, Structurally, it's fine as a Metroidvania. You have your save rooms, you have your area, and you, you, you are gaining abilities via your armor that you switch out. There's also a musical aspect to it, which is just part of the story. It's part of the theming of you finding and helping these various 
orchestra-esque characters uh, and stuff of that nature. But the gameplay doesn't feel that great. There's not a lot of depth to the combat. You don't have a lot to do fighting-wise. You're not gaining new weapons or anything of that nature. And you just have a basic attack with a three-hit combo and a heavy attack. I don't know if I'll ever... I played it for a little over two hours. I don't know if I'm ever going to get any new abilities. Outside of... I got like a whirlwind attack, which wasn't super useful. And I... And I the game does feel a little bit significantly better when you get the double jump. But what I don't like about the jumping is that it's context sensitive and that how hard you press the, the button designates or relates to how high you jump. And anything other than the highest jump that you do when you hold the jump button feels not great. If you, if you aren't jumping at your max, then you once you hit the apex of your jump, you just kind of fall down. I don't like, I, I've never liked that in a jump. I've talked about that in previous games in the past, in the recent past. I don't like the way that feels. It doesn't feel great. And then combat is never satisfying in part because the enemies you're fighting aren't, they aren't hard to deal with. They all have their routines and it's, there's nothing exciting about any enemy encounter. And on top of that, the enemies in the game are limited to maybe six or so different variants. And then there are just alternate versions of those six or so enemies based on colors, which depending on the color of their outline, the color of your armor will do more damage to them. So if their outline is in yellow, put on your yellow armor, you'll do more damage to them. You'll break the shield and stuff like that. But they're just the same enemy with a slightly different attack pattern that doesn't switch things up all that much and doesn't make them any more challenging. And every enemy has seemingly one to two attack patterns and that's it even the bosses they don't switch things up it, it 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 all ends up being this dragged out boring experience gameplay wise that's incredibly unfortunate because the game is beautiful the music's solid and the story the story is interesting from a grand scale but when you get down to the actual dialogue and all that I was not engaged with it I didn't care about these characters all that much and I really did not like your floating teddy bear buddy because the way their dialogue works is that they're just always saying like chiz, chiz, chiz. and your character Europa responds to him and she understands what he's saying so she'll talk to him you'll get his dialogue that's just his chi and then she'll essentially translate for you and herself and i don't think that worked well as a, as a way of handling that that relationship because now you're just you're forcing me to and it's not a big deal or anything but you're forcing me to read this teddy bear saying this shit all the time but i can never understand what they're saying and then you have them you're just adding this additional step to conversations between you and the teddy bear that i think would work better if the the game was voiced but it's not so it, you're you're reading it all instead but yeah it's It's unfortunately not firing on all cylinders and unfortunately not firing on the most important cylinder, which is the gameplay cylinder. What a stupid analogy or stupid fucking saying. 
I would, I would, I wish it could. It's a strong foundation. There's a lot of positives you can see in there, and you you look at the art and all that, and you're like, yeah, this is great. If they could figure out how to make a more compelling game gameplay wise, I I don't believe they could refine this game or. I don't see what they why they would do it. I would I would love to see what this studio does next, and hope that they they're able to improve where they're lacking, because they are clearly talented. The game is again beautiful. It is so I can't stress how good it looks. It looks fantastic. I wish again. The color aspect was a bit more integrated into the actual gameplay. There, there also lo one last thing. There are also instances where you're using an elevator, and that's just masking load times, and not of insignificant amount of time. It's like it's like thirty seconds. These load times, crazy, crazy. I'm playing on an SSD, not an NVMe or any of the crazy super fast SSD, but still. Come on. Come on, game. But the visuals are great. Music's pretty solid. Just get the gameplay there. Get it there. But it's not. And yeah. I, 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 it, they need to add more depth to the combat. They need to create more interesting enemies to fight against. Better bosses to fight against. And, and, and if they could do that, I think that they could make something. They could make something pretty special. But Nine Years of Shadow is not that game. It, it, if you really like Metroidvanias, worth checking out. Like I said, I played it for a few hours, and I'll probably play. I'll, I'll probably finish the game. I, I may not jump back to it immediately, but. It's decent enough. And it's also, like I said, it was, it's, it's pretty easy. So it's not like I'll be beating my head against the wall to beat it. It's pretty easy to get through. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I might wait for it. I don't know if this is in the works or anything. So don't quote me on this or anything. But, man, I've said but so many times. <sighs> but, 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 but. I'd, I'd like to. I'd, I'd rather wait for it to hit console so I can get them sweet ass achievements. Presuming, just assuming it, it would come to Xbox if it was coming to consoles. It should come to consoles though. If nothing else, it should at least come to Switch. If that's not already in the works, don't know. Don't know if that's happening or not. But what I do know that's happening is this show is ending, and I don't mean the show overall. I mean this episode. This episode is coming to an end. Because I've got nothing else to talk about. Uh, uh, which is to say, those are the games I played since last episode. And that's gonna do it. So, bye! No, uh, once again, I am Mark Chinez. Y'all can find me pretty much everywhere at PX Sausage. And of course, if you want to find links to all the places I call home that you may or may not want to visit you're welcome to at any point you can find all those though at pxsausage.com that includes this site the youtube the art i make the patreon everything you could ever hope for and not hope for you find there pxsausage.com go there all right thank you i don't know i I, I hit a brick wall apparently and I don't know what to say anymore. So it's that I'm just going to say again, as always, thank you for watching or listening. I hope you enjoy this year episode and I hope you have both a wonderful rest of your day and a lovely weekend. So for now, adios, uh, arrivederci. Bye.